Hello, this is Lisa Kay with The Adjusting Store, and this is just a small sample of what our Xactimate training will include. Just give you a brief introduction to Xactimate. So when you log in, the first screen that you will see or window that will show is this Control Center Projects and Price List window. So those are the three tabs that you'll see on this window. And from here, we can get a overview of our projects and also have access to Exact Analysis Communication Center, which is how carriers can send you assignments, then receive the finished estimate or claim reports. In our Xactimate trainings, we go over not only just the basic, but tips and tricks to make creating a claim estimate in Xactimate easy and quick. We'll also show you some tips and tricks of how to reset defaults in case the default values aren't correct. One of those I can show you right now is to reset our dashboard views. So if you happen to X out on one of these areas or pin it back, and I'll, go, I'll explain that in a little bit, then you can come back here and you can reset your dashboard views. If you need help, there's always this help section that is available and will toggle on and off by clicking on help. And it will provide some default to topics relevant to what window you have open, but you can also search for topics here. In the Control Center dashboard view, we'll see that we have recent projects here, and those this is only going to show us the 10 most recent projects. And projects are the same as a claim or an estimate. So if you have a claim or an estimate that's not showing up here, you can go to the Projects tab and see all of your projects. I'm going to go back to the Control Center. You'll notice that we have a Projects Preview over here, and then there's arrows. And so you can arrow through to see if this is the project that you're looking for. Also a little tip here is if there are any notes associated with the project, you can access those here as well. And how you do that is you right click here and you select note. And then you can see this is a note added by Lisa K. So the notes that you add or that the carrier adds to any assignment they send can be accessed in this project's preview pane as well. The next important place in the Projects Preview is the Preferences, and this basically sets up all your defaults for the projects that you'll be creating. We're going to go to Profile, and so we're going to come here and we're going to set up the defaults if you're going to do several claims in a row that have the same requirements. So if they're from the same carrier or same area, you can save yourself some time by assigning the defaults here. So we want to make sure always that we have zip code postal matching, but for our classes, we'll choose a default price list. But for real life claims, you want to make sure you have zip code postal matching. And this will make sure that the price list match up to the zip code that your claim is at. We're going to make sure that we have the labor efficiency of restoration service remodel if it's a an existing structure, but we'll change it if it's new construction. If we depreciate any of the items that we're going to put on here, we can set up those defaults here. For depreciation by, we have a percentage, an amount, or agent use, and generally I see agent use is used frequently with carriers and you can set it up for recoverable or non-recoverable depending on the policy. You can also set up defaults for overhead and profit so that any and all claims that get or projects that get created from here forward have overhead and profit of a certain percentage added on. If you have a company header that needs to go on several different claims you would check that here and basically that's a logo or an address of, of who's producing the claim or who this estimate is being produced for, say if it's being produced for a carrier, and the claim rep. The claim rep is going to be you. 
Another area in the defaults that you want to make sure is set up right is doors and windows. If you have a carrier or you want to deduct the doors and windows from wall calculations, you'll come into this default area and make sure that these boxes are checked. You can also deduct doors and walls from calculations if they're greater than a certain square footage. The other place that I would suggest coming to is your view. And this is going to help you see when you get open your sketch windows or your estimate window. Right now we're in the main window and we're in the sub, sub tab preferences under the tab control center. But when you get into the sketch view or have created an estimate, these are some default things that will show up that help things. I always have show all measurements because I like to see my measurements as I'm drawing. Show underlay, which means I can see underneath the level underneath of what I'm drawing in case, um, say, it's a, a I drew the foundation first and I just want to put the main level on top of that, then I would, I would have uh, my foundation to guide me. And then show labels such as, you know, dining room, living room, that type of thing. And then um, a legend. Uh, and the legend basically is a directional legend. Is, is this north, south, east, or west? But the one thing that I always make sure that I do is I, I, I like to have my base font size a little bit bigger and also my measure, measurement font size. So here in Control Center Preferences view is where you can change those and make those sizes a little bit bigger for you to see. The Documents module is primarily used if you're doing carrier claims and you can add the company headers and their model statements here. And the contact manager is used infrequently, so we probably won't go over that. Another important area of Xactimate is this data transfer. And you'll see data transfer only in the main window. So you can only bring in an Xactimate file from the main window. If you have an estimate open and you say you need a price list, which is a data transfer file, you would have to come back to your main window to get that. But this data transfer is available in the other sub tabs as well. So you can always find data transfer back here in your main window, no matter what tab you're in. So we're going to hop over to projects and again, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to reset my projects view because normally your projects view looks like this but I like to see a preview of my projects just like I did back here in the control center where I have a little projects preview. I can see that I can have that here as well. I can see all of my projects here whereas the control center only shows me the 10 most recent projects. So in the projects of course I can open a project or I can add a project and I can rename a project. Those are the primary things that you'll be doing here. And then, of course, the price list. The price list area will show all the price lists that you have downloaded and available to you for an Xactimate estimate. Price lists are updated monthly and weekly if it's in a cat situation and the prices of components are fluctuating because of supply and demand, then they'll be created weekly. But you always have to request them. So at the beginning of every month, you're going to have to come here and, and request a download of your exact from Exactware of the price list based on the zip code. You can also request a custom price list for a an older price list if you happen to need that. But again, you always have to request your price list. Even though get, they get updated monthly from Xactware, you still need to request and download them. So now we're going to add a project and this time I'm going to add it from the control center because I can add a project here. I want to make sure that I'm going to 
add an estimate and not do a residential valuation. And I want to make sure that I have the right profile selected. So sometimes a carrier will send you a profile and it is set up for their defaults. So we will always want to make sure that we have our right profile here and that we're adding a project. And lastly, but most importantly, we want to make sure to rename this. So I'm going to choose sample claim three and I'm going to add new project. So you'll notice that this opened uh, uh, on top of my main window. So my main window is still opened in the background. I can come in here and I can open by double clicking there another project. I can have several estimates or projects open at one time, but only one main window. I need to save and exit all projects before I close my main window or you will lose your work. So we're going to close this one. I'm not going to save an exit because I didn't change the project. So now that we're in the estimate window, we can actually start estimating. So you'll notice that the tabs are different than they are in your main window. We have a claim tab, a sketch tab, an estimate tab, and a complete tab. And then we have some other choices over here as well. Again, I can toggle my help on and off by just clicking on help. The way that Exactware has set Xactimate up is to do the claim in stages. So the first stage is entering the claim information. The second stage would be drawing your sketch. And from your sketch, you can actually get variables are created that have measurements associated with them. So you don't have to calculate everything. You can draw your sketch and have Xactimate calculate it for you. And we have estimate items. That would be the third stage. And then the way Xactware has it set up is complete is the fourth. And then print is the fifth. I think that when you're doing claims that it's a little bit easier if you do your claim information and you add your insured info first, your coverage loss and your parameters, but then also import your images so that you can have those available to you when you're actually sketching. So part of step one would be to enter in the claim information the coverage loss, and that would generally be the claim number, the policy number, the type of loss it is. If this is a carrier claim, they may have a CAT code. And then policy dates. You always want to make sure that you put in your deductible and enter in your limits of coverage here. And then we're going to add our parameters. We're going to make sure that our price list is is the correct price list based on our zip code. And how that gets accomplished is, is once you put in a zip code here, then the price list will automatically, it'll tell you whether or not you have that price list available to you. And if not, you may have to go back to the main window and download it. I'm just going to use the training price list for this estimate. And you can see that some of the defaults from the control center preferences, I can change here. So I can change uh, depreciation. I can change whether it's recoverable by default. So when I say by default, that means that every item that I add to this estimate, if I apply depreciation, it will always be recoverable. It will always be depreciated by age and use. Those will be what the default values show. But I can change that um, here and also in an item by item manner as well. And you can see I can add overhead and profit and I can change my company header and opening statement. Those, so those are some defaults that if I didn't get them changed or they are wrong from a previous claim, then I can change them on a claim by claim basis as well. But it's sometimes, it's very, it's much more efficient if you change your defaults to set up for the average of most of the claims that you're going to be seeing. Then you don't have to change this every claim. Okay, so once you come in here and enter in your claim information, your insured covers loss and parameters, we would import images. And how we do that, click on load images. And I would go to the file that has my images. I'm going to do control A. Shortcuts are also a much more efficient and faster way to do things. So that shortcut was control A to select all the images. And then I'm going to click open. 
and that will import all my images. For documentation sake, what you want to make sure is that you always describe the location, the damage, what type of damage you're looking at, and if it's covered. In order to save your images and anything that you place in here, you always need to make sure you hit OK. Now we're set up to start our sketch and today we'll be sketching this roof and the part of the main floor. Okay, so let's take a peek and just a quick overview of what you'll find here. So this is our sketch window and you'll find that you have these up here are all the tools that are available to help you sketch your drawing. And if you hover over each one of them, you'll see that it shows the name and that it has something in parentheses. And what it has in parentheses is a shortcut. So if I just typed F, then it loads a roof onto my cursor. And you'll know that it isn't placed yet because it's in ghost mode. So in ghost mode, I can move it around. I can hit my tab key and I can tab it around and get it oriented. But also what I can do, just the roof tool, is I can hit my space bar. And then my space bar will run through all the different roof types that are available. I'm going to hit escape. Escape is will always remove something from your cursor. I have this loaded onto my cursor so it's not placed yet until I left click once and then it's placed and you'll see it's highlighted and then I know it's placed. So another thing to note is that some of these up here have little carrots next to it and that means that there's more than one choice. So for a roof you could actually just select the roof and that will load it onto your cursor as well. Another thing that you'll notice about the sketch pad is it has these sub windows. So it has this search. So I could actually add line items to my drawing if I wanted to. That's called estimating a sketch or graphically estimating. I also have a image box so I can see all my images that I uploaded. So I, it'll give me a quick view of where damage is and, and what I have to draw. But it also shows you items listed for, this is for main level, but if I select room, then it changes item list for room. So when I graphically estimate or I add items in the sketch pad, those will show up down here and I'll see, what I, see those items. For me, what I like is I like to give myself as much room as possible. So I'm going to click on this little pin. Right now what this means is this sub window is pinned to my sketch pad, but if I unpin it, it goes back here and just becomes a tab that will slide in and out when I actually need it. So I'm going to do that for all of my sub windows. So I have the biggest area that I can have to draw. Also down here, these are measurement tools. You see my measurements, but I can turn them off and on. I can turn the label off and on. If there were notes on here, I could show those or not show those. This is for roof annotations and we get, when we get to the roof I'll show you that. So these are visual tools. Over here are zoom tools. This is the pan tool or if I hit the space bar then I have a little hand and then I can move kind of my sketch pad around. Then I have the zoom out and zoom in and this one zoomed to extents. So what this does is anything that's on my sketch pad it'll center it up. Number one tip is to zoom in. Zoom into whatever you're working on at that moment. Just going to draw a quick room here. If I select this room it'll zoom to that room and then again zoom to extent centers whatever I have on my on my sketch pad on my screen. We also get a 3D view, so we'll be using that. In fact, I will show you the 3D of the drawing that we're about to create. So here is the 3D. This is our roof that we're going to be sketching. And I'm actually going to show all levels. So this is going to show the main level down below as well of any of the rooms that I have drawn down below. So I'm going to hit escape to get back to my regular view. I'm 
I'm going to take a moment and talk about the area where you draw. This is called the sketch pad. And you can have multiple sketch pads, but you should only put one structure on a sketch pad. So if you have multiple structures, you will have multiple sketch pads. So this sketch tab here represents the structure that is covered under coverage A. And it has a roof level and a main level. So the main level sits below the roof level. And it, and it has also a second structure or coverage B or other structure. And this other structure also has a main level and a garage level. So this is one sketch, one sketch pad for one structure. I'm going to rename it to coverage A. Hit OK. And I'm going to have a main level. And I'm also going to insert above a roof level. And I'm going to draw my roof first. And I'm going to name it loop roof. When I tab, it renames it for me. I hit OK. I'm going to close this. And now I'm going to use my shortcut F. I'm going to hit my space bar to get to the right roof. And I'm just going to draw this sketch really quickly for us. What is always important to do is to always make sure that you change your slope first. Because your slope will affect your measurement. So I always come in in here change my slope first. And how I got there is I can either get here or I can double click on this and it'll bring up the properties. So in the properties you see that there's lots of other things that we could change. So now that I've got my slope done, I'm going to start dimensioning it. Here's my roof annotations and they're going to get in my way. So I'm going to turn them off by clicking on that A. I'm just going to start dimensioning. I always type in my numbers because that will get me exact. And it's a lot quicker than pulling this lever back, back and forth. These boxes, you can resize it by pulling on these boxes, but I always generally speaking, we'll just come click on the blue measurement and type in my measurements. You'll notice I'm putting a comma there that represents that tells that anything after it is inches. So I'm going to zoom to extent so you can see and zoom out just a little bit. Now I'm going to add my back roof. And I always add roofs by using the break tool and the control key. Control creates. It will create whatever roof type I broke it off from. This back roof happens to be a hip, so I'm going to change that to hip. And I'm going to also make sure that the pitches right while I'm in here. Now I'm going to continue to draw the roof. And there are certain things that if you do will make your drawing a lot easier and more accurate. So for roofs, always remember to adjust the pitch first because that will affect your any measurements that you change afterwards. To change measurements, you can either pull on the white handle and move, slide the wall back and forth, or you can type in your measurements. Typing in your measurements will give you a more accurate sketch than it is to pull on the measurements. And you'll be surprised at how much that really affects your measurements if you don't type them in. 15 comma 9 represents 15 feet 9 inches. Always zoom in to the area that you're working in. That'll make it also a lot easier to use the tools and be accurate. And pay attention to what you have highlighted because anything that you do afterwards will apply to what you have highlighted only. Now we are going to move on to draw the interior of the sketch. So we'll move to the main level of the sketch pad. And while I'm sketching the interior, I'm going to share with you some interior drawing tips as well. So always use shortcuts. So R for room or B for break. Draw one room at a time as a box. Dimension that room, so make sure it's sized right and then name it before you move on to draw the next room. Use the break tool 
and the control key to create rooms from an existing wall. Draw or add your rooms in a top to bottom or left to right fashion to avoid creating holes in the middle because Xactimate won't allow you to do anything with those holes. When changing measurements or dimensions, always type in your measurements, but before that, when, when you click on the handle to activate the measurement, pull it in the direction you want the measurement to change. So then Xactimate will know what you want to do with what you've typed in. And lastly, add openings like doors, windows, and missing walls to your rooms after all the rooms have been drawn. Now that I have all my rooms created in boxes, basically as boxes, I'm going to go in and put in doors and windows. We'll start with doors. Uh, the control key not only creates, but it keeps, so I'm going to hold the control key down to keep that door onto my cursor. In all the places that I have a door, I am going to place a door. Hit escape to remove it from my cursor. I can change the direction of this door as long as it's whatever I want to work with. i got to make sure it's highlighted and I've got these flip tools and I'm going to make that flip in. Okay, now we've got all our windows and our doors in there, and we've got our drawing complete. I'm going to rename this to Coverage coverage B. So now if we had a Coverage B property, which in this example we do, and it's just a shed, so it's really easy and simple to draw. And I'm going to create the exterior of my garage by generating exterior walls. So now we can move on to estimate items. And you'll notice that in the estimate view, we have a little small window that actually shows you everything that we just drew and their names, and it places it in the order that we drew it. So it's in the proper order. And then we have a search window to actually search the price list in several different ways to find the items. And then down here is where you'll see the items show up. Okay, I want to make sure that I always have selected what I want to add the items to. And you'll notice here we have folders and we have this little icon here. This little icon means that this was created in Sketch. So because it was created in Sketch, it also has the dimensions of that roof already associated with it. So before I add any items, I'm going to just make sure that I have the right location highlighted and I'm, then I'm going to come in here and find my line item that I want to add to this. And you'll notice in the 3 tab 25 year it comes up as a remove. So I'm going to remove the exact amount of squares and then there's always um, a little bit extra for the addition including waste. So I'm going to come to my property editor and I'm going to add 10% waste and I will continue to add line items that I need, making sure I get the right quantity in here. Now you'll notice that the quantity for the the shingles comes up as square, so it actually used my calculations from my drawing. So 
So once you have all your estimate items added, you would review your work and make sure that everything's been entered and it's complete. So we have the claim information was the first thing, then we did sketch, and then we went estimate items. Exact where it says complete is the fourth, but I really think that print is the fourth step, and then complete is the fifth. So when we come in here, we have lots of different reports that we can choose. I'm going to choose final draft with without removal. Let's just go ahead and view this. And so this is the estimate. We only did put in a couple items, but this is the estimate. This is the logo or the company header that was selected for this. There was no model statement, so that doesn't show up anywhere. But this is our estimate report. There's other reports that you can also create and this would be the second tab. And then you can also attach and upload documents where you can combine them then all of these into one report and merge the reports and either send them to somebody, save them as a PDF, or send them back through exact analysis. Okay, well that concludes this short preview of Xactimate. Here at the Adjusting Store, we strive to make all classes relevant to your needs. So please let us know where your adjusting struggles are and we'll do all that we can to help alleviate those. This is Lisa Kay and I am looking forward to seeing you in class. Thanks for your time and please feel free to contact us. Have a great day.